Good morning and welcome to Issues and Views. I'm your host, Todd Anderson, and I have a guest with me this morning who we're familiar with. Samantha Mott is from Berkshire Farm Center and Services for Youth. And uh, Samantha, we last met on January 15th, and um, hopefully you're still doing as well as you were then. How you been doing? Great. Thank you so much, Todd. You know, I've we've been doing a lot and I hope you're doing well. Um, you know, it's been a couple months and lots of things going on. Yeah, getting getting warmer, getting closer to springtime. Last time we met, I think there was uh, all kind of snow on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's melting a little bit, but hopefully we hold out and get some spring weather coming. It's going to be spring on the 20th, so get that going next week, right? Yeah, that's right. So Berkshire Farm Center, it sounds like a farm. But who is or what is Berkshire Farm Center? So Berkshire Farm Center is, um, we're a leading child welfare agency. We provide services to uh, children and families throughout New York State. Our mission is to strengthen children and families so they can live safely, independently, and productively in their home communities. So we do many different things in that whole realm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what do you do? Um, we provide a wide variety of services, including foster care and adoption, mm-hmm. kinship services, uh, which are right here also in Erie County, uh, preventative group home, residential, secure and non-secure detention services, residential and other services. Um, these services are available and are designed to maintain the important connections in the lives of youth by keeping them right here in Western New York. So I did mention that kinship program, that's right here in um, Erie County, in Western New York, we want to make sure that these uh, services are provided for our families here at home. So what is, what's kinship? So kinship is, um, is a program and these are services for those who are caring not only for family members, but those that are close to them. So if someone has an existing relationship with a child and they have that child living in their home, either through um, formal or informal custody so someone may ask them to take care of their child for a short period of time while they uh, receive treatment of some kind um, then that that could trigger them to then receive services through our agency or another agency or even through the county Um, that person can sometimes in certain circumstances become a foster parent for that child Mm -hmm. Um, so this looks like very different things so um, we see sometimes a teacher or a um, educator of some sort taking custody of a child or even a neighbor. If you think about it, you have connections in many different places, your place of worship, your school, your grocery store, your doctor's office, where they have a relationship with your family and that can be a resource for your child. So secure and non-secure detention, what is that all about? Um, So those services are provided um, for children or youth that need more of a secure environment because they may have um, just they just may need a little bit more support in the area of supervision. So we have 24 hours supervise, supervisory staff as far as um, we have clinical therapists right there all the time. There's someone on shift 24 hours a day. They're not in a group home or a uh, foster care setting where there may be less staff or people there with them or they're in a home. Um, this is more of a secure facility where we can ensure that they are going to remain safe. Okay. Now, the last time you were here, we talked um, extensively about foster care. Um, Do you guys have some new stuff you want to talk about? Yeah. So we are working on a event um, actually out in Niagara County, but fairly close to here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. Um, We are a lot of exciting things going on with that. We um, are working to spread the word through this event uh, regarding the need for foster and adoptive parents through this uh, event. It's a informational session. We are holding it. It's actually uh, Wednesday, March 21st, um, this coming Wednesday from 6 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m. It's going to be located at the American Legion number 1451 located at 6525 Ward Road in Sanborn. Um, so the purpose of this event is to provide free, no obligation information to the public regarding this need. So um, we keep talking about this need. And so right now there's about 160 children in foster care in Niagara County. So wow. we, um, yeah, that's a big number. And um, so this will be an 
engaging environment in which those in the community, so anybody listening right now, anybody who's received our information, they can come in, they can get a bite to eat, speak to all of our staff, including our directors and supervisors, casework and training staff, and other foster parents as well. They can be engaging with these people, um, get their questions answered, and also hear the stories of those who've already gone through this process, gone through the training and certification, Mm -hmm. those who currently have youth placed in their home or gone through an adoption. Um, I myself will also be there. Um, We'll be able to provide a little bit more personal um, answers for questions that people have regarding the requirements to become a foster or adoptive parents, uh, the process to do so, which, uh, you know, includes classes and all these different things. Um, We'll also have current, uh, you know, again, those current foster parents available to engage by, um, you know, not only having those stories told, but just talking to people. Um, You don't have to always be a doctor or a nurse or something like that to provide a loving and nurturing home. And we want those, you know, those interactions to occur. So, um, so now what's the difference between foster care and adoption? So the ad- adoption is considered a permanent place or a mm-hmm. permanent situation. Um, that's where a foster parent would have legal custody of that child. The child may or may not choose or uh, to change their last name to that adoptive parent's name. Mm-hmm. But it mm-hmm. takes legal uh, custody from the, the birth parent or the county to that adoptive parent then. And then um, that is your own child. Uh, while you're fostering, you may consider that child your own child. However, your signing rights aren't exactly there. So when that child does become available for adoption, then that process can start and we help you through that. So a very supportive environment is what we provide. And um, someone can come in and choose to foster to adopt or just do adoption. And we provide all these services. And there are many children in need in all of these areas. So if anybody has any questions regarding either of these, we'll be really be able to answer these questions at this event. And also, we will be providing um, applications and information right there. Everyone will get a packet upon walking in. Um, they'll be greeted by staff. Uh, we'll, we're really going to um, set up that success for that process and ensure that this does happen. And there's also a training uh, class that is already set up for a few weeks after this that I, myself, and my coworker Janessa will be running to ensure that if people want to get started right away, they can. Um, but of course, no pressure. Do, uh, do foster parents normally parents normally become adoptive parents? Uh, Many do, yes, because uh, once they've already formed that bond with a child in their home, um, they feel that attachment is so strong that, um, you know, why not? And um, that child's already a part of their family. They've already formed attachments and connections with everybody in that foster parent's life, Mm -hmm. whether it's an aunt or uncle, um, their neighborhood, their the school or school district that child is already in. Um, The foster or adoptive parents' own children, whether they're already living in the home or they're adults, um, their uh, congregation at church, if they do go to a church or or a synagogue or a mosque or something like that, Mm -hmm. they've formed those relationships and it's already important that child many times wants to stay mm-hmm. and it's so important for us to ensure that that connection is continued so now when you um, delve into this as an individual um, and want to become a foster parent um, you can do so um, with the understanding that um, you can designate that it's going to be temporary right you don't you don't have to be an adoptive parent right correct yep we have many foster parents that just foster um, with the intention of assisting that child with right, returning home. Right, they want to help the kid out, right? Yeah, yeah, to return home to their birth family. Mm-hmm. And that child will always have a um, want and a need to remain connected to that birth family. And whether you are, you know, maintaining it through the adoption process or just helping that family maintain the connection while they're being fostered, either way, that child is going to appreciate your love and kindness in that process. Okay. Um so now there is a great need in Niagara County uh, for foster parents. Um, what about Erie County? Yeah, so there's there's a need, yes, absolutely, in our entire area. So the current need in Niagara County um, spans throughout every part of the county and affects each community. Um, again, I did say that there's about 160 children in foster care in Niagara County, mm-hmm. um, with about over 2,000 children in, uh, in Western New York as a whole in our various placement settings, including foster care and adoption settings 
homes as well as our group homes. So many of these youth have, have experienced abuse and neglect, which have left them in a need for a safe and nurturing home environment. Um, we're in need of um, foster and adoptive homes in Niagara Falls, Lockport, Wheatfield, um, North Tonawanda, all these other areas in um, Niagara County, as well as in Erie County. So downtown Buffalo, all over Buffalo, Tonawanda, Cheektowaga. Um, this is extremely important that we let people know that this can happen anywhere in your neighborhood to your neighbor. Um, this is right next door. It does not happen only in the inner city, but everywhere, rural, suburban. Um, this is affecting everyone as a community, and it's uh, it's our job as an agency, we feel, to ensure that people are being informed, and through this information session, we'd like to do that. So, And our goal is to keep children in their community or school district that they come from in order to minimize the amount of trauma they experience. So what that looks like is if a child is coming from Hamburg, for example, we would like to identify a foster home in Hamburg if it's possible to keep them there. Um, if they have to be removed from their biological home or birth home, um, that's one trauma. But then if they have to be also removed from their school district, from their teacher, their friend, um, their church or, uh, or place of worship, their community center, all these different things that they feel is comforting to them. If we remove them from many of these things, um, that's just adding to the stress of that child. If we can just keep several things or even a few consistent or keep siblings together, that will help with that process being a little easier. So then again, when they return home, that disruption is easier for them. Many things have remained the same. Um, so in yeah, that's, that's got to be kind of uh, very hard to uh, just change, like almost overnight. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we do have an adjustment period that many children um, do deal with, and that's, again, where our agency comes in. We do have a full um, therapeutic program. We have um, an on-staff psychologist and uh, on-staff clinical therapist available. We are a 24-hour agency as well. We don't um, close for those reasons that many things uh, may come up where the child is feeling um, that they need that extra support of the foster parent is. So we provide that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you have a problem or a concern at 3 o'clock in the morning, you can give us a call, and we're there to support you and provide that um, additional guidance. Um, and we do that with our own staff. We're not outsourcing you to crisis services or to the county. It's one of our staff members, either a clinical therapist on call or a program coordinator. Who knows you? They have your name. So if you're Mrs. Smith and you're calling at 3 a.m., then we have your information right available. We know where you where you live. We have the information on mm -hmm. the child placed in your home, and we're able to assist you with whatever you really need. Well, I don't want to make more work for you guys, but uh, it sounds like uh, just families in general could take advantage of, uh, of some of the, th the things that you do um, in terms of uh, just helping families out that might have some issues within the home that aren't adoptive or foster situations. Do you help just normal families? Well, yeah, that's where our kinship services come in. Um, oh, okay. So those are in Erie County. Um, so if you're taking care of anybody else's child, whether it's um, of a relation to you or not, so your um, grandchildren, your nieces or nephews, brother, sister, a neighbor, um, you know, a student of yours, you have temporary mm -hmm. or legal guardianship, you can give us a call as long as you're living in Erie County for this mm -hmm. program particularly. Um, this is run out of our Buffalo office located at 975 Hurdle Avenue in mm -hmm. Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, we're right on the corner of Hurdle and Delaware. Uh, that phone number to reach that program is 862-4212. This is the kinship, right? Yep, absolutely. Um, and then we have other programs throughout Niagara and Erie County and also Cattaraugus and Allegheny. Um, those programs, you can um, go on our website because some of the programs either have to be referred through the school district or through um, county probation, depending on the program. Um, so again, those are Allegheny, Cattaraugus, Erie, and Niagara counties. We have school-based programs in many of the school districts. Um, the pro we have a probation program based out of Erie County. That referral, I do know, is through um, probation department 
department or the police department, I believe. Um, so if you have a child who is receiving uh, probation services, we can provide additional support. Mm. But you would have to ask the pro- probation officer of your child in order to get that referral. So visit so our website. 861-862-4212 uh, for our kinship program. And then for our other programs, they can visit our website, and that's berkshirefarm.org. And then on the top of our website page, there is uh, various tabs. One of them does say, um, I believe, services. Um, and there is should be a spot for prevention. Um, there's also a contact spot on the top of our page where you can see our different information for our different offices. So you can certainly do that. Or also call, contact your local Department of Social Services and see if we're available in the county that you live in. Um, and also your school district. So various school districts that we are in, you can see if you can get a referral either through the counseling office, the principals, or the social worker. They may Mm. be able to direct you to see if we're available. Um, Some of our services are contracted through the school district. So certainly reach out and see if we can give you some assistance there. Wow, God is good because I need you guys. (laughs) Really, I'm serious. I was telling you off mic that um, my, my two boys just came to live with me. Yeah. And uh, they're from Avon, so this is uh, kind of a uh, transition for them, uh, kind of spur of the moment. So um, that leaves me with having to register um, one of them in school and uh, just a whole bunch, whole bunch of stuff. So I could probably use you guys, right? Yeah. The kinship yeah. program? Uh, the kinship program, because they're your own children, wouldn't oh, work. Well, so that's, we, that's can, what I, that's we can talk was, after. But that's what I was asking. So if, if it's your own children, you guys don't necessarily assist mm, with that? Not for kinship. So depending on the school district you're in, mm-hmm. there are other services, but um, we can talk later. There are other services available depending on your school district for your own children. Mm-hmm. So if we may not be able to help you, we can always direct you of where to go because every school district, um, so for example, in Buffalo, there's Say Yes and all these mm-hmm. different things. Mm-hmm. So um, there are services everywhere. Um, it just depends on what is being utilized at that time. Many of our services are designed for crisis intervention and some of those more serious situations. The kinship program is really designed to support those caring for other people's children. Okay. All right. Um, now, uh, what are you doing to meet the needs of, of everyone in Western New York? So um, so we did mention the need in Niagara and Erie County. So um, in Erie County, the situation is really much the same, as I said, in all of our kind of areas. Uh, there's an excess number of youth requiring a safe and uh, nurturing home environment um, through foster and adoptive care, yet we are um, experiencing a lack of these resources. We are really experiencing a lack of these foster homes. So we have several staff, including myself, um, that work with community stakeholders, um, so our very resources such as yourself here mm-hmm. at Town Square Media um, in order to attract, recruit, and provide information to these people who are prospective foster parents or adoptive parents who may be looking to either obtain more information or possibly go ahead and get started with that process. Um, so we make it easy for those wishing to gain additional information um, to meet with us either by phone, in person. Um, we can meet them at maybe a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks just to really talk with them, have that ca- casual conversation conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, Let them know what this process kind of looks like and put them at ease. Um, We don't just provide information and paperwork, but we can walk you through that process, help you fill out things, guide you, um, really be personable. Um, We provide various different trainings. Depending on your work schedule, we will be doing a um, class coming up on Saturdays on March 24th, and then we do evening classes as well, and kind of trying to really be understanding that, you know, not everybody works during the day. Not Mm -hmm. everybody works during the evening. Some people are only available on the weekend. So, um, and really being, um, meeting the need through convenience. So whatever's convenient for somebody else, um, if, you know, prospective foster parent, again, if they need to meet at an outside resource. So we understand that making this decision to foster or adopt is one that involves the entire family. So mm-hmm. if you, again, if you have adult children, um, your spouse or your significant other, um, and it sometimes takes several years. So, um, this is a process that, Uh, sometimes takes someone hearing about our agency or hearing about fostering or adopting in general multiple times or sometimes, um, you know, 
talking to someone or talking to an agency five or six times, for example, until they make that decision, even to start the classes. They may not complete the classes because they decide, you know, this might not be really for me. I don't, I'm not sure if I could do this because emotional attachment, and that's what we're here for to kind of guide you and support you through all of that. So, um, now, are the meetings always at one central location? Um, yes. Yeah. So um, here in Buffalo, or the we, classes, I should say. Yes. So uh, here in Buffalo, we tend to do them at our office. Um, so the ones in March will be held um, at our Buffalo office. And what's the address again? Yeah, nine seventy five Hurdle Avenue. Okay. And we're actually in the Kmart Plaza. So if everybody knows where Kmart is, right mm-hmm. in North Buffalo, we're right over there. Those ones will be on Saturdays. So anybody who wants to kind of get involved with those, they can give a call to our office as well. Um, again, that office number is eight six two. Four two one two, and they can ask about the Saturday map classes. They're called. Do you have to uh, make sort of a reservation in, in advance, or can you just show up? Um, so we do want people to call because they will have to have an orientation or kind of an informal meeting. We like to call it. Um, get an application and talk to one of our staff beforehand. We would mm. like to get um, you know an idea of how many people are coming and have to put a, a name to a face really before that kind of gets started. Um, we like to get to know our families a little bit before that does happen. Um, so so we know. Like for example, Todd, if you were going to come and join, mm-hmm. we know who Todd is before he comes in or um, all of that. How that looks. Um, We do have another class coming up um, after this information session in Sanborn um, on Mapleton Road. Um, This one will be for Niagara County people. Um, It's in the middle of the county. This one's going to be starting Thursdays, April 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. at night Mm -hmm. um, at uh, St. Peter's United Church of Christ on okay. Mapleton Road. This one's kind of, um, again, as a follow-up to the event, we want to have a training that's close following after so people who are interested can kind of come in right away if they'd like to if not no problem there's no obligation to uh, jump in immediately but for those who are interested absolutely we have that available so now the Thursday event for uh, residents of Niagara County is it do they call the same phone number they can or they can reach out to um, myself if they'd like to attend the training but really um, we want people to attend this event so the event on mm-hmm. this this Wednesday again that's March 21st um, from 6 to 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. at the American Legion number 1451 located at 6525 Ward Road if you come in get you know you can get a bite to eat get some information and talk to us we'll be able to kind of provide that information about the the training right there Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to be handing out applications you'll get all of that kind of um, questions answered right away the orientation will kind of happen right there Um, all of that will kind of be a setup for that training so um, again for anyone looking to attend our free informational session Wednesday March 21st they can call 862-4212 extension 10 Mm -hmm. to RSVP Or if they can't make the event and would like to obtain additional information, um, they can still call the phone number um, 862-4212, or they can also visit us online. Our website is www.berkshirefarm.org. And then our event, again, will be located at 1, I'm sorry, 6525 Ward Road. That's the American Legion number 1451, and that's in Sanborn from 6 to 8 p.m., and um, I have brought over some flyers here for Todd, so mm-hmm. if you guys yeah. want to stop by. Nice looking flyers. What uh, would you make a difference in a life of a child? Free information session. It gives uh, all the information here. Um, I did want to ask you, uh, we're, we're talking about Niagara and Erie County. Um, how about Monroe County, people who are listening in Rochester? Yeah, so, you know, we do certify foster homes out in Rochester. We don't make it out there very often, unfortunately. We're trying to really focus right here um, in the closer uh, Buffalo area. But we do absolutely certify foster homes. And if I need to Mm -hmm. make it out there to certify your home, absolutely, there's a great need out there. Um, It's kind of a small Buffalo. um, So just the same kind of amount of demographics, um, children from all over, um, your 
outside of the city as well, inner city kids. Um, so those of those of you listening, please feel free to attend the event. Um, same thing, Orleans County, Genesee, Wyoming, mm-hmm. anywhere in Western New York. Um, you're welcome to come if you're willing to make the trip. If not, please still give us a call. Um, we're willing to um, absolutely go wherever is needed, especially myself. Um, I am often in many different areas for recruitment events, um, various family events. We will be um, going all over this summer just to try to spread the word about what this need looks like for um, for our children in our community and nobody is excluded absolutely from getting more information looking to become a foster parent joining us in any way that they possibly can and even if you can't become a foster parent or you don't think it's the right the right time you can spread the word. You can assist us in um, visiting our Facebook page, sharing our event, liking our page. All these different things mm-hmm. will help us by letting people know um, that we're here and we're here to fight for our children. Um, you can, you know, of course, we accept donations, um, but any any little bit will help as far as, again, liking and sharing our event on Facebook. Um, we also have other events throughout New York State at our other offices that hold similar events. Um, in the Albany region, um, in you know Binghamton, Syracuse, all these different places that also have foster care services, we also hold similar events to do the same thing. 160 kids uh, needing a home. That's, a, that's a, a, an amazing number of, of children. Um, what's the average stay within the facility uh, for, for any of these kids? Um, the average stay in foster care in New York State is over two years. Uh, and that varies so that's just an Mm -hmm. average number and that that depends on many factors so either a child waiting to return home to their parents Mm -hmm. or a child waiting to be adopted so Mm -hmm. um and you know this child is going to form a bond and an attachment with you regardless of you know what the goal is if the goal is to live independently on their own if the goal is to return to their parents um or if the goal is to return to any family member or be Mm -hmm. adopted that child is going to form an attachment and a long landing lasting relationship and we see many of these relationships go on for years and years and years Um, we've seen foster parents um, some with us that have fostered for well over 15 years Mm, that have relationships with children um, that you know still love and care about them they still hear from them all the time and these are so important that as humans that we continue to share this love and hopefully through not only this event but upcoming things that we're doing we can continue to do this now someone listening may want to be a foster parent but feel as though they can't afford it do you guys help in that respect yeah so there is um some assistance that's provided um there is daycare um if you are working or or volunteering full-time daycare will be provided as long Mm. as you can we can help you identify as well a daycare that is contracted with the county that the child is coming from Mm -hmm. Uh, medical expenses for the child also are paid for Um, so whether it's dental or it's physical health for the child you know their wellness checkup um, medication all these different Mm. things Um, and you know if there is any ever any question regarding this we can certainly answer that for you Um, so and then their their clothing and that will be um, reimbursed at a certain rate okay Um, so all of these questions we do answer in the classes and we can answer also in this information session so but if you feel like you have a more personal question a more intimate question that you'd like to like to talk to us about you can always come to our office you can visit us online and we can call you personally um, you can give us a call um, we have all these different ways that we can ensure that your privacy is taken very very seriously we do pride ourselves in that as well we want to make sure that everyone can feel as though they are taken um, uh, with the utmost respect and dignity, of course, because not every situation is one that people feel is appropriate to talk about it with mm-hmm. other people. So whether it's a fertility issue or it's one about finances, as you had just mentioned, um, or we're about whether or not it's the right time for them to foster or adopt, we want to make sure that we're giving one-on-one attention to all of our prospective foster and adoptive parents. So this might be a little tricky um, because we have a, a number of listeners in Canada um, are they invited to come to the uh, to the class, or how does that work? So, um, for those that live in Canada, um, they would have to. They can absolutely come, no problem at all. Um, the problem 
I wouldn't, I don't want to say problem. Um, the situation, the situation, <laughs> the tricky thing with Canada is they would have to have a residence here in the United States. Oh, okay. Um, and so if they did not live in the United States permanently, they would only be available to do what's called respite. So that's a temporary kind of care for a child. They can still be a foster or adoptive parent, but they would have to have um, a residence here. So either okay. an apartment or a home or something to that nature where they would be able to be a part-time foster parent. So if they're staying here, Monday through Friday, and they wanted to be a foster parent Monday through Friday, we'd mm-hmm. call them for those kind of temporary care situations where they take a child for for another foster parent for a break or if that foster parent needed to go out of town or something like that. Okay. All right. Well, so for anyone looking to attend this free informational session this Wednesday, March, 20, March 21st, they can call 716-862-4212, or I should say they can, you can call 862-4212. Uh, extension 10 to RSVP. Uh, if you can't make the event and you'd like additional information, you can also visit uh, the website online. It's berkshirefarm.org. That's B-E-R-K-Shire, S-H-I-R-E, farm.org. And again, that event will be located at the American Legion, number 1451 at 6525 Ward Road in Sanborn, from 6 to 8 p.m., is that correct? Yes, it is. Right. Uh, but um, there are also some classes that you mentioned, some Saturday map classes on Hurdle. Yes, those will be March 24th. Um, they'll be starting at 9 a.m., but please give us a call um, before you, if you'd like to come, and we will get all those rolling for you. We'd like to meet with you beforehand and get your you know, information down, get you an application so you can join us. So the safest bet um, for... All of this information is just to call the phone number, 716-862-4212, extension 10, right? Yep, absolutely. All right, Samantha, thank you very much, and we hope to uh, talk to you again uh, in a few months, and uh, I'm sure you have some, some more new stuff you're, you're talking about. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Todd.